Well, welcome back to Live Journey Production Studio. Sorry about that. It looked like I had my still image on. Um, that was a uh, fail. Looks exactly like my intro video, but it doesn't have the countdown clock on it. So we are live. It's Tuesday night. Welcome all of you guys who are in the chat. We have a lot to do tonight, lots to cover. A couple things to unbox. Let me look in my uh, Amazon orders to see if my order has come yet. Tracking. Yeah, I think it's delivered. So I'll see if I can text my wife to get that package. But welcome tonight to the live stream. I just would really like to um, um, bring this new item on the air tonight. So let me text my wife here. Okay, well, anyway, tonight we're going to unbox two things. We're going to unbox the Key Light Air by Elgato. We're also going to unbox the, um, what is this thing called? The DuraCube. Sorry about that. Um, man, I've been looking at this stuff all day long. I have my portable solar panel, 100 watt kit, also by GoPower slash Dometic, and um, same with the solar panel. So the DuraCube's a 500 watt cube. We're gonna unbox that. We're gonna unbox the Elgato Key Light Air, which is their second smallest light. So they have the Key Light, and I have two of those in the studio. I have this light right here, which is not on camera, but it is the Key Light Mini. And now I'm adding a Key Light Air, which will go right over here um, for this other camera. And I can switch to camera three and look right into the camera and talk to you guys about chat. Let me know if the lips are in sync and everything's um, good to go tonight. And uh, we will say hi in the chat and then we're going to get started. Let me grab my mouse. Uh, lots of people arriving in the chat. It's good to have you. If you get a moment, please hit the like button. That'll help other people join us tonight. We'll meet new people. And um, just to start out, I wanted to give a shout out to Adam Tao again from Mix, Mix Effect. He um, helped me with a client this week and um, still got to get some them hooked up together, but just thank him here live in the live stream. Also a shout out to Go Power. Um, when I did my shoot in Dallas, Oregon last year, um, they uh, saw what I was using as a portable uh, power bank. And um, they said, how would you like to um, have um, a solar panel and have a DuraCube, and I said, that would be great. What's it going to cost? And they said, we'll just send you one. No strings attached. Don't have to do um, an unboxing or anything like that, but we are going to unbox it tonight. So a shout out to GoPower. They are incredible people. It was great to shoot video for them. And um, so we'll talk a little bit more about what's going on with that video footage that I shot last year. And um, we'll uh, talk more about that in a stream coming up. But tonight we're going to look at those two items also have another item that just arrived, but I'm here. I can't go get my package. So we'll do a little vote tonight. If you want to give me a break to go get my package, if Shannon doesn't bring it in, you let me know and I'll introduce that to you and we will unbox it next week. Um, and that'll be a lot of fun. So it's good to have you guys all in the chat. So let's fire up chat here and, um, Let's see, early, early on tonight, um, what's going on with chat, chat on the air. We had uh, David early, early on. He said, I wonder what the side effects are. He is talking about um, 
this still image right here where I said, can live streaming have side effects? And my answer was, yes, it can. And um, so let me put that back up there. So he asked me, uh, what could the side effects be? And um, I said that many, I will share those tonight. So we'll do that. Um, also, please say hi in the chat tonight, where you're from, if you would like. That way, if anybody's new, they get the chance to get acquainted with you. Many of you have channels. Um, so if you have a channel, you have your own YouTube channel, um, if you would just say channel in the chat tonight so everybody will know to check you out. And then again, if you have any questions tonight, if you want to put a cue in front of your question, that will help me out. That way, if you're chatting back and forth or saying hi back and forth, I can focus just on the questions. But anyway, so it's good to have you here, Ernesto. Good to have you here, David. Thank you guys for joining me. Um, what happened to the music? I don't know what happened to everything tonight. I apologize. Um, I was playing around with my sky cam, and suddenly, um, all of a sudden, I looked up, and there was no countdown clock. That's why it's important to have monitors. I don't know what happened to the music, but um, we'll see what happened tonight. Yeah, he was enjoying the tune. Thanks, David. Um, I, he thought he lost his hearing. No, I, I fixed it with the last 45 seconds to go, and it should have been playing. Um, hopefully, it was playing. So, again, um, good to have you guys here tonight. Um, drive safely as you're driving home tonight, uh, Ernesto. Um, David, back in business, good to have you here, Tony. And again, let us know where you're from so that other people can kind of get an idea. Maybe you're in the same state, maybe you're not. Maybe you're not in the United States. Maybe you're in other places around the world. Welcome to our live stream. Um, the tune is great. Thank you. I like the tune as well, David. Appreciate that. Um, there we go. Eric is here. Good to have you, Eric. Um, Deleted your message, but hi, Eric. It's good to have you uh, in the chat. Eric Lack Lackness. Um, let's see. Let's see. Anybody else coming in? Uh, Jay's in the house. Good to have you, Jay. I appreciate you joining me tonight. Sorry, I have not been uh, able to attend your streams. Monday nights are crazy, uh, but I will check it out. Go over and check out TVJ's channel. Um, it's growing. I think he's over almost 1,600 subscribers now. So uh, he needs a lot more views. So please go over and check out his channel. Uh, Tony had a new video today. Um, so let's see. I don't have a Tony without him saying hi. So go over and check Tony's new video out. Um, really good video today, Tony. So I commented on it. So go check out Tony's video on Quick Tech Solutions. Um, and you'll get to see a little bit of behind the scenes stuff with what he is doing in his studio. Good to have you, Doug. As always, um, great to have you. I love Doug's uh, Forced Online channel. Love your laid back style. So thank you for joining me. And again, if you have a YouTube channel, please put channel in the chat so other people can check you out. And if you haven't subscribed and you're listening tonight and you can't chat, I have subscriber only chat on. If you, if you subscribe one minute later, you can chat with us. So please do that. You're welcome to just sit back and watch. Uh, if you're watching this after it went live, you also can put questions and comments in the, the, the video. If you want below, I like to respond to those. So we would love to know more about that. Excited to have my live stream studio set up. It's going to be really cool. Um, Jay, and to leave your info. So... There we go. So let's clear the chat. So as more people uh, join, um, we will uh, say hi. Um, you can see that uh, Jay's rescheduled his stream for tonight at 9 p.m. So I can watch you tonight, Jay. So I'll try to tune into that. And the rest of you can join me as well. We'll be off the air tonight, 5.30 or so my time. Uh, we have lots to cover. So we're going to dive into that again let me just do a slideshow real quick and give you kind of a, an idea of where we're headed. Um, actually, let's not do that. Let's just get right into it tonight. Um, you're welcome. Um, I want to support every channel here on YouTube. And obviously, if it's something to interest you, go over there, subscribe. And um, hopefully, you'll invite some of your 
um, friends and your subscribers to join us here on this channel, Tuesday nights, usually at 4 p.m. and that specific standard time. Um, we do change our clocks for daylight savings time, so we've changed everything back. So time should be normal. So if you're on the East Coast, you should be three hours ahead of me. If you're in Australia, I think it's four or five o'clock in the morning. So um, yeah, good to have you, DJ Ware. Thanks for joining us tonight. Okay, so a little backstory. Um, I um, I did this shoot down in Dallas, Oregon. It's about six hours away. Um, and um, Forest River is a manufacturer. They manufacture lots of things. But one of the things that Forest River manufactures is RVs. And they have made a deal with um, Go Power, Canadian company, owned now by Dometic, I believe, or they're co-owned by Dometic. I'm not sure exactly how that works. Um, they went to the April shoot with us, and we did a day probably most of a day shooting with go power solar panels batteries all the stuff the trailers um the the things that we had out there at the sale and they only make trailers in the dallas oregon factory and so lots of these have hookups for solar power many of them had 30 watt um, panels inside the higher end models in other uh, locations are going to have bigger 50 amp um, panels, but in reality, when I, when I say the, the the monitoring panel, and you can actually see one right there above my thumb, my my thumb that came with my portable 100 watt solar kit, and we'll talk about that tonight. So they have the monitors inside the trailer, solar panels on the roof, and all of that was installed by Forest River. But the stuff comes from Go Power again. Check them out. I have a couple links below. Um, some of them are associate links, some of them are not. I could not find the DuraCube um, on Amazon, so you'll have to go to a camping world near you. And um, if you go to uh, the links that I have in the description, I believe you can find it. Or if you go to Go Power in Canada and go to their site, you'll be able to find more options there for you to be able to find a DuraCube. And we're gonna unbox that first. And then we're going to unbox the Elgato key light. So we're going to get into that here in just a minute. Um, okay, well, maybe it's four and a half hours away. Good to have you here, Hank. Um, checking, uh, Hank checking in late out for pizza. Well, man, you made me hungry now. Uh, so send me a slice. No, better not, because it'll be pretty rank by the time it gets here. Um, so good to have you, Hank. Uh, David, yeah, I think... It might be four and a half hours. I live in Richland, Washington. So if I jump on the highway and head out, probably could get there in about four and a half, five hours. So I remember the first time I GPSed it, it said it was going to be five and a half to six hours, but I was also traveling in the winter for that uh, event. It got canceled and rescheduled in April. So I have six hours stuck on the brain because I thought six hours in the snow, no way. So yeah, I'm jealous too, Eric. Thanks for joining me in the pizza whining. <laughs> so, and I am whining. Um, so I've got my flavored water. And I'm um, going to talk just a little bit about um, Go Power before we unbox it. Um, I was using a portable battery bank by Paul C. Buff again. Um, I have some lights. They're flashes. They're called Einstein lights. Paul C. Buff is named after an individual. His kids are running his company now. And they make flashes and different lights for photography. And they also make a little portable bank. But mine was making bad noises, the fan motor. Um, I think I probably shouldn't have had it inside the bag. I think it overheated. And long story, it was dying on the chute. And that's what I was using to charge up all of my batteries. So I'd use my big battery bank to charge up my Canon batteries and other batteries. Um, and some things were plugged in directly, like my main cameras were plugged in directly to this lithium battery bank. Um, and so because they were there doing batteries, we got talking about what would be a better portable system. And I thought, wow, this little DuraCube and this 100 watt panel would be perfect for me because when I'm shooting outdoors, I need portable power. When I'm shooting indoors, I usually have power. But 
it would be nice to have the DuraCube with me indoors and outdoors and have the solar panel to charge it. So what happened is that they had some giveaways, some stuff they had shipped to Forest River. And um, because of policies there, those guys couldn't receive those gifts. And I don't have any policies for not receiving gifts. So I left with the 100-watt solar panel, again, a gift from GoPower. And then um, also they have sent me a, a DuraCube, also a gift. And again, no strings attached. This is not a sponsored video. Um, it's just simply I'm going to pay back by unboxing it tonight. I'm going to give them my unfiltered review, and I'm going to use it, take it on some shoots. So I will have some videos on my channel in the future um, and uh, I'll do a review of the DuraCube. Uh, I'll also take it on some shoots and do some shorts. So it should be lots of fun as we go forward um, having that. So um, so David says, no pizza for me. Um, I have food allergies. Man, that is so, I feel bad. I have some skin allergies as well, but pizza is not one of them. I am allergic to wheat, so I have to get gluten-free pizza. And um, I'm supposed to only do um, sharp cheddar cheese, but again, I cheat when I'm eating pizza. I don't swell up, but I do have allergies, skin allergies that will flare up. Um, again, hope the hives pass quickly. That's from uh, us all, including from Tony Initiated. Um, something that was in the pizza. Wow, sorry to hear that. And it's good to have you, Joe, joining us. Joe, again has a channel. So if you have your own YouTube channel, please type in channel. Joe will have to type in the actual name because he's using a different uh, YouTube um, to be on us live tonight. So with us. So again, um, hi to everyone. Hi back and forth. Okay. So can you can continue talking about pizza? And um, uh, I will put this up because Joe responded. CT is the channel. So streaming CT, so go check out uh, Joe's channel as well. Great information on all of these channels, and um, you don't have to have a channel to join my live stream. If you just like checking out the tech, I, I appreciate you joining me. If you're just listening and you're not chatting with us, um, you can chat. If you can't, for some reason, it's because I have subscribe-only chat on. So just subscribe. You can chat with us during the live stream. If you want to unsubscribe later, that's perfectly fine with me. Um, if you ring the bell, you'll be able to be notified it, notified every time I go live. You should get a notification when I go live, maybe 15 minutes before. I don't know. You guys will have to let me know in the chat when you get your alerts. But it again, it is good to have you and back at you, Joe. Uh, and Joe uh, gave me a super chat last week. So thank you, Joe. So anyway, so... DuraCube is the first thing we're going to unbox. So let me see. I did not prepare this ahead of time because I wanted to do some of this live. So let's do this live. So I need to fire up my Skycam here first. So I'm going to turn chat off the air. And let's turn the Skycam on here. Chat off. And then what I want to do is I'm going to do this in front of you all. So we're going to bring my control software over here. Um, let's just use this camera for now. So we'll change angles here. This is the Tony from Quick Tech Solutions angle. And um, try to keep my microphone in play here. Um, and um, so what we're going to do is we are going to go into Super Source here. And um, I like this layout. So what I can do is I'll go into box two. And I'm going to change it to my PC. And so there is the solar panel. And then we'll see which one of these I need. There we go. So that's the camera angle we're going to use. I think I have a close-up over here, too. I just want to find out which one it is. There's close-up on that. Yeah, there's the DuraCube. So let's, let's use this angle. And I'm going to open this up so I can zoom out just a little bit. And then I'm going to change microphones to my uh, lav lavalier. So you guys should still have audio here. So I'm going to slide this out of the way. And um, it's a little low. Let me know if that audio is good. 
and uh, I can't enable chat for a little bit, so please stand by. I can see your chat. Um, alerts are 30 minutes, uh, David says, so thank you for that. Um, also, um, um, we will uh, talk a little bit more about some of the new people that joined us, but let me grab my knife, so don't try this at home. I'm going to move the key light out of the way. And let me stand this up. And let's see, how's our shot? Yeah, that's good enough. Let's go a little wider. And I'll bring this down just a bit. There we go. This has been taped for a while, you can tell. Check the view there, that's good. Let me hit record. So let's just do a quick introduction here. Um, I want to go from that view to this view. I don't want to change that. So we're going to unbox the DuraCube now. So join me as we go into SuperSource and we unbox it. I have cut the seal already. I forgot to hit record. So the seal is cut. And I'm sorry you don't have a better view at me. But we're going to unbox this. And um, you'll at least get a chance to see part of me here. So open this up. And take out the cardboard. You've got this little... A direction here tells you all about the DuraCube. We're going to put that over on my desk. It's a two-fold. Um, I'll hold it up on this camera as well. So we've got DuraCube. Information on the back. ISO will change once I get back here. So we'll set that down. Go back to that. And so then you have the accessories. So we'll start here. This is the power brick. I'm gonna just throw this stuff away. So we got the power brick right here. Um, this is a cord for your car, 12 volt adapter, which a lot of people will use this um, potentially to charge it inside their RV. So you have that plug. You have um, so I'm going to set this down. This is a brick. So this is the cable that plugs into it. And we are going to charge this up tonight. It will probably be dead because it's never been unboxed before. So we're going to plug this together. And we'll undo this side because we are going to use this. So you got a nice cord and got a nice cord and I'll, I'll stretch it out here in a second and then you have this end that's going to plug in directly in the device so we're going to set that down then you have a number of cords that comes with a kit this is one of the unique things about this duro cube um, and that you have jumper cables and so um, the solar panel came with them as well. So you've got the jumper cables and then you have the solar end to it right here. And so those are nice and you can see the size of them based on my hand. And they're a pretty good shape. They're heavy duty, they're not cheesy. So I like it, it's got good springs in it. So we'll set that down. Again, we have this cable I'm not gonna use right now, but that also will plug into the charging brick and into a 12 volt um, cigarette lighter or a lot of RVs have them. And then you have the main adapter right here. And um, that's gonna plug into my adapter I have over on the chair. So we're gonna set that down, open up the next level. Oh, there's something right here. Oh, that's the handle. Okay, set that down and 
out comes the Dura Cube. Set the box down. Oh, let's show you the box. So here's the box. It says 500 watt hours on the front, Dura Cube, portable power station, Go Power. And it's got trailers, tents, boats, and for medical use. They need to have a little picture here for video production. Some stuff on the side, just letting you know, portable charging power, 500 watt capacity. And we'll talk about all this, uh, ideal for portable device charging, emergency preparedness, backup power, vehicle jump starting, which is, again, I think that's a great thing it has. Again, same stuff on that side. And then on this side, you have kind of a side picture of the device and then a lot of the specs and we will cover those specs. And then again, nothing on the bottom. Okay, let's unwrap this. So there you go. Let's get all this stuff on the floor here. Put the knife away for right now. So there you go. There's one side of the DuraCube. And let's zoom in now that we don't need the big box in our shot. There we go. So. There's the main part of it. You got ventilation right here. You have an LCD screen. You got the power on and off, uh, or DC power on and off, AC power on and off, the main power switch. You got a regular plug-in right here, another plug-in right here. Right here, you have the ability to plug in those uh, power adapters to jump a car. Got a regular lighter. Uh, outlet right there. I've got USBs across here, one USB-C, two here, two USBs here, and one USB-C there. On the bottom, it just got all the specs, and we'll turn it around this side. More DuraCube la labeling. On this side, you have a DC input, 12 volt to 30 volt, and a DC input, 12 volt to 30 volt, volt and then you have a vent, and there's a fan inside. And so let's turn this on and see what happens. Yep, and as they said, it is going to come dead. So there is the uh, Dura, Dura Cube. We're gonna have it out here again in the next couple weeks. I'm gonna plug it in here, see if we can't get it charging. So I have a power strip right here on the floor. Let's zoom out so you guys can participate in this. Power strip. We're gonna see where we plug it in at. So this little, uh, little paper has all the directions on here, let's change cameras. Go back to this angle. And um, let's see, 17 and 19 are DC charging port. And 17 is AC and solar charging port. So 19 is for the cigarette ad adapter for charging. And 17 is for the AC solar charging. Just trying to make sure I don't plug this into the wrong port here. Okay, so on the front of it, where the LCD screen is, you have nine is DC 12 volt cigarette port. And um, 
So 17 is AC and solar charging port. And 19 is DC charging port. Cigarette lighter adapter sold separately. Well, it came with it, so. Um, so yeah, I'm guessing, um, Okay, so at 17, it says charging on the inside page right here. So right here, it gives you instructions. Sorry, that light is so bright. And it says charging your GP DuraCube 500 has two charging ports on the back of the unit. One is for standard wall charging, as well as charging via a solar panel. That's 17. The other is for charging via cigarette lighter sold separately. So it must be a different kind of adapter than the one you plug into the uh, power block. So we want to plug into 17. Hopefully this won't blow up on me. Ugh. And according to the map, 17 is on the left. And it says DC. So we're going to let that charge for right now, and we are going to go on to part two of tonight. So back to this microphone, and let me get chat back on the air here um, real quickly. And let's just see if anybody else has joined us before we move on. Um, alerts are 30 minutes before lab is working. Great. Thank you, uh, Eric, um, cigarette adapter, laugh out loud again, yourself there. Ha ha. Yeah. Well, it's 12 volt cigarette adapter. I'm glad you guys are having fun with me right there is that comment from David. Um, they actually call it a cigarette port on the manual. Yeah, they did. So they, they, they uh, helped me out there and made me look better. Um, yeah, that's a technical term for the port. No magic smoke, so for so good. Yeah, no smoke. Um, yeah, we need some smoke. Um, and hopefully that battery doesn't start to smoke. Okay, so... I wanted to share just a couple things with you. So we're gonna go to a different screen here now that we've unboxed it. So let me go to, uh, let's see. Go to this shot right here. So here is the little pamphlet manual that you can find on their site. And I could zoom into this. Let's make it a little bit bigger so you guys can see it. How about gigantic? So, and I also have my teleprompter available tonight. So let me change over to text. And um, I'll go through some of the specs. Um, and um, you can see my teleprompter software, so I'll move it off the screen here. Um, but the DuraCube has 512 watts hours actually capacity. Max solar input is 120 watts, 5 volt, 24 volt. Uh, why did that stop? 
Um, so our controller, 125 watts, MPPT. Not sure what that stands for. Maybe you guys know better. It's a lithium uh, iron phosphate battery. Um, and um, it has two DC ports, uh, two AC ports, um, pure sine wave, 120 volt. Uh, backslash 60 hertz uh, DC output it has one port 12 volt slash 10 amps or backslash 10 amps um, two barrel connector ports 12 volt and 5 amp type C output one and uh, times port DC to um, 18 volts whatever that means USB outputs there's four they're 5 volt to 3 um, amp 5 volt to 3 amp, 9 volt to 2 amp, 12 volt to 1.5 amp, maximum 18 watt, maximum combined power per pair, support quick charging 3.0. Um, the case is, is Anadose aircraft grade aluminum. The dimensions are 9.84 um, inches by 7.48 inches by 9.45 inches or 255 millimeters by 190 millimeters by 240 millimeters. And it weighs 18.7 pounds or 8.5 kilograms. And it has a two year warranty. And um, that's it for that device. So that's kind of a look. But if you look at the specs here, um, it gives you kind of a list of what uh, you can do with it. So reliable power anywhere, charge your mobile devices, run your electronics wherever your adventure takes you. This portable power station offers green, silent source of energy while you enjoy your surroundings, so it's going to be quiet. Ideal for tent camping, camper vans, tent trailers, backyard parties, festivals. There you go, me doing a festival with my video uh, equipment. Fishing, wow, that sounds like fun. Um, backup power for emergencies, easily pairs with Go Power, Duralite expansion kit for quick and efficient charging. And I'll grab my solar panel here in a minute and show it to you guys. Um, features, again, we've covered those. Um, but again, rugged, lightweight, compact, made of an anodized aircraft grade aluminum for unbeatable quality. I love the fact that it has the uh, jump start feature. Um, Life PO4 lithium um, battery offers four times the cycle life of a traditional portable packs equipped with multiple power outlets, two AC outlets, one USB-C, four uh, USB plugs, and one DC outlet built-in MPPT solar controller maximizes solar charging. Pass-through allows you to power your devices and charge your DuraCube simultaneously. That's important. Built-in battery magnet. Uh, Management system, BMS, protects against voltage, current temperatures, uh, uh, reverse polarity issues, uh, recharge using solar, sold separately, DC or AC adapters, limited to your warranty. And there is kind of a picture of it. And I can zoom into that so you guys can see what the LCD screen looks like until we get to have it all charged up and show that later on here in the studio. So one side and that's the back side. And then you have the two ports right here. And on the front, again, on and off switches for the types of power, main on on switch, switch, USB across here with the C in the middle, the DC output 12 volt slash five amp right there. And then two um, AC outlets there. So I could plug in two cameras with dummy batteries and be able to film or a power strip in one of them and a camera in the other one. But again, I got 500 and it looks like 12 watt hours. Um, and you can see that it gives you a charging uh, picture there so you know how it's charging. So again, I will get this out when it's all charged up and bring it back on the live stream. And we'll do that in a video in the future. But tonight, I mainly was going to unbox it, get everything out of the box. So if you have any specific questions about the DuraCube before we move into opening the Elgato Keylight Air, and we're going to fire it up as well. 
And um, I'm actually going to see if I can get it hooked up and a light right here before we get off the air tonight. So, um, and yeah, the battery type is really good. I'm not very much into batteries, but I do know based on my research that a lot of other people that reviewed it, and I think I found a couple reviews on it, talked about it's uh, unique in that it has jumper cable available availability and it has a really good um, battery. Battery life should be great. Um, and um, and lithium, uh, David's saying lithium iron phosphate is better in this application. So again, I'm not a battery guy, but um, LIPO definitely has the reputation for long lasting mini wear cycles. Yeah. And so a lot of the batteries that we worked with at the shoot in Dallas, Oregon, um, Eric, were actually very high-end batteries, lots of cycles of charging availability. The same kind they put in the a lot of the vans uh, that came out of Canada, the like uh, conversion vans, uh, B pluses, whatever you want to call them, or B vans that you can camp in. Um, they were using uh, those type batteries as well, obviously a lot more expensive. Um, and um, I used to sell those for a living, but I'm starting to forget a lot of the RV lingo because I haven't practiced the lingo in a while. So, okay. So any other comments or questions before we segue into opening up the Elgato key light? Um, and then I want to show you my solar panel. So let's fire up the sky cam again here. And there you go. Let's take Skycam, uh, our chat off the air. And then I will just cut to the Skycam. I'm going to move my uh, teleprompter back over here. And then let's go back to uh, me and my laptop. And I will change what's in box two again to my PC so you guys can see this. And let's move the Skycam up. Which one of these is it? I think it's this one right here. And I'm gonna jump up and walk over there. So this is the solar panel kit. You guys should still have audio on the lapel mic to get the chair out of the way. So I'll kneel down here. So this is the 100 watt solar panel and it folds up and I have the, a 30 amp solar charging controller uh, plugged in right now. It's right here in my hand and um, this folds up, but on the back it has fold out um, brackets to stand it up. So this will easily slide back in the case right here and um, just drops in the case. And then you have a jump starter adapter that comes with this kit as well. And then all of these cables come in this 100 watt panel kit. And they have a newer version of this that actually is expandable so you can get other panels. And then it goes from, I think a 30 watt um, uh, a solar uh, charging controller. You can get a, the other set comes with a bigger controller, controller and then you can add panels to it. So this is your main panel and then you can add extra panels. So you have all these adapters that come with it right here. Um, and I'll bring these over to the table so you guys can see them. But I wanted you to see the solar panel and um, I'll show you guys the specs again, folds out. So I can throw this in the back of my SUV, in the bag, throw all the accessories down inside the bag and be able to fly into a chute and have all of this stuff available. So let me get back to the desk here. So this is the controller. And again, it is a, a 30 amp solar charger controller. It's got Velcro on the back. It's got more adapters in the back and it's already got some stuff plugged in. The opposite end of what's on the adapter. Let me just set these things down. 
The opposite end is what plugs in directly into the solar panel right there. And so that plugs in and then it has another um, output right here and it has even um, uh, more outputs on the back. I'm not sure what these are for, probably controlling it over um, a controller. But again, this would be like you just have it Velcro to the back of the panel and you'd be able to see if it's charging and it's sending the voltage out. And I'll take this outside and get some video footage for you guys um, so that you can see it um, working. But for tonight, I'm just showing you the parts and pieces. Then you also have another set with this type of adapter on it for um, the solar kit. And this is the 100 watt portable solar kit. And I'll show you guys the specs here in a minute. Then you have um, this adapter right here. Comes with it. You have this longer cable right here with the ends on it. And um, I don't quite know sure it is. But I mean, it's doubled my wingspan. Have this adapter right here that goes to a battery, a traditional battery, so you could charge your traditional battery with it. So I could use my solar panel to recharge my car battery if something happened. Or I could use it when I'm traveling to jump my car. And then two more adapters. You have this one that breaks out. Um, and I'm not sure what this is for. And then you have this one, which is a lot of the RVs that we used to have had this type adapter and it's got a little rubber cap. So that would be for some of the trailers that I've seen that we've sold that just have solar prep on the side of it. So you'd plug this in as a portable panel and set it in the sun. The nice thing about portable panels and not having them on your roof is that you don't have to worry about them not being directly towards the sun. These you can stand up and turn towards the sun. So if the sun is off axis and not directly over your head, um, then you get more solar charging by having it tilted up. And I actually sold panels to customers that had an electric switch and their solar panels would raise up when they got to the RV park. Um, and um, so, and now they make stands that go both ways. So it'll scissor this way or scissor that way. Um, and you'll see that in really, really high-end RVs. So um, those are the accessories that come with it. So it does have um, everything that you need in the solar panel kit. Um, all of it can be in the carrying case. And we're going to put it away right now. So you guys are going to see that. So let's cut back to Skycam here. That's not Skycam. That is Skycam. And I'm putting all of my adapters in there. We'll let that charge. We'll get this out. Set it on the table here. And let's change camera angles right now. Oh, so many things to keep track of here. Back to my PC desktop, change the camera angle, uh, that'll work. 
Let's zoom in just a little bit. And down. Okay. So before we completely run out of time, should still be on my lapel mic. Let's break the seal. Here's the box. You've got all this writing on the front. Got some information here on the side, key light air, more information over here. Here is the back of the box. You've got some uh, examples. It is a desk type stand. You can buy other adapters from Elgato. And actually they sell, if you go to Elgato site, they sell a dual kit now for $200. So if you don't want to just pay for one, you can get a dual kit on their website. I couldn't find a link for that on Amazon. It will incorporate with the control center for the Stream Deck. That's why I like it. Works with Mac, Windows, Wi-Fi, uh, works with Stream Deck, uh, get it, works with Google Play and Apple Store. You can get it from Google Play and Apple Store. And then it's got all the features on here. The side just kind of shows you the stand right here. And how tall it is, 24 inches to 35 inches. And then the, the light is 205 by 205 by 35 millimeters or eight inches um, by eight inches. Actually, I have a 0 .07 um, by 1.38 inches thick. So let's pull it out and actually look at it instead of the box. So I'm going to pull this out. The box is now empty. Sure you guys are seeing this comes with this little top piece just cardboard here's the manual tells you how to hook it up in all the different languages tells you how to hook up the light and set it up we're going to need to use that so how to get your stream deck working and um, then all of the installer value key air in different languages right here all the way to the back of this. And um, that's the guide. Then if we um, open the box, you got a pull in there. We'll get to that in a minute. Inside the box, you have the power cord. You have all the adapter ends, as well as the joint that you're going to need, oops, that goes on the device on the top. So we're going to set that down. And then I'll pull out this little tightening knob as well. And you also have this little piece right here. And I will show you guys how that goes together. So this just pops into here. We'll have to take it apart again when we put it together, but I'm going to just do this real quick while we're on camera. And these are steel, it's made of steel. And then we'll keep this adapter because it's going to go here somewhere. There's this little Elgato paper thing you get and just about everything they sell. If you get a gimbal, you get this little pamphlet. And then here's the different ends for the different countries. We're going to pull out mine right here. Set those down. We'll pop this on. Twist on. So you push the button and it pops on and you twist it on. And then we're going to undo this. Power cord. So 
I'll show you guys the link here. Here is the length of the power cord. So a little bit further than my reach. So that's how much is left over from my reach and I'm stretching as far as I can. So go back over here. I'm gonna set this on the floor. We're gonna set this on my desk and this on my desk. Now let's open up these two packages here. This is the light right here. So there's the light. There's the size of my hand. My key light's about this much bigger. But this is going to be 14 uh, Anselumas, I believe. So we're going to throw the paper aside, set that down real quick. This will be the base right here. So pull it out. Nice solid base. That's the top. This is the bottom. It's got a rubber heavy duty. It's very heavy. It's weighted. And then you've got the mount, and that's what that screw is going to do. So we're going to put this, we're going to do this like this. Grab our screw it came with. Screws together. You can see it's got marks on the side right here for how tall it'll go and down again. So we're going to tighten that up. We're going to set the box aside and we're going to change this camera. So Okay, so now we are going to attach this bracket on the end, put both of them together at the same time. There's a notch actually in these. I'll show you guys up close. There's a notch in these. Wish I could get my camera to adjust to that. There's notches in them, and that goes on the notch on the stand. And then this is a ball that just comes together and you use this nut to screw it all together. So I am going to put it together right now. Hopefully you guys can see this going together. There we go. Now, by loosing this, I can spin this adapter. Cool. Turn it around. Let's set this on the ground. I'm gonna plug in the adapter right there. Plug in the power supply right here. Well, actually I have a separate power cord laying here. So we're gonna power this up. Turn it on, and there you go. Once we get it set up, you can see the light, um, we'll be able to wirelessly connect to it. And there is a switch right here on the bottom. You can see it in that view right here. There's the switch. 
right there on off but it's designed to go in the wireless it's got a wireless receiver and then there's where you plug in the power supply and then there's a reset button right here um, that you reset and we'll read the directions now and we'll get it set up i need to get it on here nice and tight so it stays put i'm going to have it kind of coming down like this on me and we're going to feed the cord so the other thing that's really nice about this and i'll have to do it later but it has a bracket right here to snap the cord in and then there's a trough all the way down to put the cord in all the way down to the very bottom let's try to get this on the camera <laughs> where's the camera so there's your trough all the way up and um, so that's so you can feed the cord in and i'll mess with that later not why we're live so now we're going to set it up here uh, on my aim this down further set this up on my desk and just so you guys can see it i'll bring it all the way up it's this tall that's the maximum so i'll put that on the main camera right now so on the main camera you can see how tall this is and it's got a weighted base so if i was just to leave it on camera which i think we will do tonight just put this up here so it doesn't fall over that's why it's not shining on you guys so uh, let's get a different camera angle now there we go so now what we're going to do is let me change what's in box two real quick so you guys can see the software We'll bring up the software now. Camera Hub is, oh, I don't want Camera Hub, I want Elgato. Um, it's not coming on. What's the deal? Okay, unplanned issue. Let me just make sure it's not coming up on one of my monitors. Huh. I don't want to mess up because it'll turn my lights off. So it will go like this because these are on my stream deck. But usually I can access it even when I'm live. So I don't see it down here. Just switch to camera three real quick. Very interesting. It is not letting me fire up the software. It says it's already open. Let me turn Skycam or chat off the air. Interesting. Well, let's find it. Okay, let's turn this off. Let's shut this off. says it's on, but it's not showing it to me. Let me try Alt-Tab. There it is, but it's not coming on. Hmm. We exit it, 
Hopefully my lights won't go out. Whew, I'm getting hot. Okay, there we go. Now we got it up. So it's open. Let me see if I can add another light here. There it is. Elgato Air. I'm going to connect. I need to select my Wi Fi. Let me put my password in off camera. Hopefully it will hook up. It'll probably want to do a firmware update, but if it doesn't hook up, at least we tried. Let me go back to this mic. Back on the main mic here. Okay, so it says waiting for Elgato. So we'll just see if it's going to fire up here or not. You never know with live. I'm putting myself out there. Um, can't make that any bigger. I'm sorry. And you can get the control software by downloading it from Elgato's site. Um, and while that's trying to connect, let's just go like this. And here is the stuff that comes in the kit for, um, for Elgato. Just increasing the screen size here. So here is their site. Um, Covers the key light, the control software. You can run it from your phone as well. These are the different layers that are in the air, as well as the key light and the mini. So you have all this diffusion, which helps it. The lights go around the outside and shine inward. And then you have all this filtering. Um, and we'll look at the specs here in just a second. There's the profile of the light. And it go it telescopes up and down. If I zoom out, you'll see more of that as I go up and down. Integrates with the stream deck, and then now they have this little six button deck. Um, here is it on the desk all the way down, and um, so you have these accessories in it. And I have a slide I can throw up uh, real quickly, so you guys can see all of that. Um, here is that solar panel with the back and everything Velcroed together. I wanted to show you guys that earlier. I forgot. Um, and, um, oh, I didn't drop that graphic. Oh, yes, I did. Here it is. So here's the accessories that come with it. Um, let me go back to uh, just me on the screen. Uh, what do I got? What do I have going on here? Turn this key on the air, and I'll just go to black background. So that's what you have in the kit. Um, so there's all the parts and pieces. And um, we'll go back to my camera here and um, drop my logo back in that key, and we'll turn the logo back on the air. So let me share with you the specs. So um, you open up my camera hub software and hit play, and I'll walk you guys through the specs here. Um, roll, buddy. So key light air brightness is 1400 lumens. It's adjustable from 29K to 7000 Kelvin. It's got a CRI rating of 92%, which is pretty good. That's the color gamut. Um, uses 25 watts of power. You can connect via Wi-Fi 2.4 gigahertz on the 802.11 band. Um, it supports uh, encryption, WPA slash WPA2. The dimensions, again, I already shared this, 205 by 205 
by 35 millimeters or eight by eight by 1.37, and it's actually eight inches, um, 0 0.07. It weighs 1.21 pounds. Um, the ball head mount is the 101 quarter inch screw. So if you wanna get a different adapter to uh, mount it to something, you need a quarter inch screw. Um, the telescoping pole goes from um, 60 to 88 centimeters, so 60 to 88, or 23 inches and a half to 34 and about a half. So the base dimension is 205 by 205 by 18 millimeters. And again, it's weighted, it weighs two and a half pounds or 2.2 pounds or a thousand grams. And it's eight by eight by eight by again, one seventh of an inch thick. And um, the, in the box is the key light air, the ball head mount, the telescoping pole, the weighted base, the power supply, and the quick start guide. And there you have it. Those are the specs of that um, device. And again, I like them because they're very soft light, even though um, they're not as perfect as a soft box, but they are as good as you're gonna get an LED light. They're not inexpensive, but they do firmware updates. It's integratable with the Stream Deck, um, all the Stream Decks, including the Stream Deck Plus. So you can then turn your lights on or off and you can set them and have them on your desk. And with a switch of the button, they all come off and all come on again, including the lights that I have on my stand right there. Those are the Elgato LED strip lights all the way around that corner shelf. And um, so it's nice to be able to just turn them on and off when I need them. Um, and when I don't need them, they're off when they're on. I'm live or I'm doing a cons consult, but it's designed to light up my desk. So now I'm gonna have a uh, key light on that side. And I'll show you guys what I have here real quick. I'm gonna plug my mobile phone in so you guys can see. The room. So I have a key light there, that's the larger one. Those are 2400 lumens. And I have another one right there on that corner of my desk. Let me go wide. So that's for this camera and I really wanna move it over so it's not directly over the camera. I haven't done that yet. But I kind of use that as a fill light. And then when I'm facing this camera, when I'm facing that camera, um, and then I have a hair light up there, that's the key light mini, um, and it's more like this size. So it's key light mini, that's my hair light. Um, and then the new light's gonna go right here in this corner, and it will be a hair light when I need it, um, when I'm facing the back camera behind me, or it'll be a fill light or a key light for me when I'm looking at my teleprompter and I'm using this camera right here. And that's my 5D Mark III and that's the Tony Quick Tech Solutions camera angle um, because Tony likes it. So again, so one, two, and those are the key lights. Now I have the air and, and I have a mini and those are my lights. And then also around the desk back there, um, you can see around the shelf, I have the LED light strip and with the addition on it. So you can buy that from Elgato as well and you can put it on your shelves. So I can make those, those LED lights any color. These are um, uh, daylight or um, uh, not daylight balance. So you can go to different colors. And um, so hope that didn't make you too dizzy. So now I'm back and we'll look to see if it hooked up. So um, it says, try again. So I think I have to hit a button on it. So we're gonna read the directions real quick. Okay, uh, reset will restore your key light to factory settings. Um, let's see how you get it going. Um, the uh, power switch, then the reset button and the quarter inch mounting thread 
and the D1 and zero on. So let's see, I think I have to go to a certain switch. Switch on your key light air, it will take approximately 10 seconds to boot up. Launch the control center and pair the key light air by clicking the plus icon, which I did. Use the control center to switch key light air on and off. Well, I don't have it hooked up yet. Download and install, I already have that. Um, okay, let's look at the back of the light here again. Go to this other. Off, on, let's try to hook up to it now, again, let's hit the plus button right here in the software, it saw my light before, there it is, connect. Wants my password. Maybe I put it in wrong. So we'll try this again. Trying to connect again. We'll see. Um, and if it doesn't connect, I will continue trying and demo it next week. But it should connect. Um, I know the password to my network. Um, I might have to do a firmware update or something. I don't know. But usually you can't do the firmware update until you have it connected. So let's just see if it connects. And while that's going on, I will kind of wrap things up tonight because it is 20 after. Uh, but I got a lot done in an hour and 15 minutes. So um, let me know if you like tonight's stream and if you have any questions um you put chat back on the air and move the sky cam software out of the way um it's good to have you that dev ops kid hey good to have you uh, what's the price um let's see um on the The DuraCube from Camping World right now is $7.99. Um, I don't see a price on the solar panel. I think this was like 400 and some dollars if I remember right. I have a link in the description below. Um, and then the Elgato Key Light Air. And this software, so it's 129 or you can buy two for 200 bucks. They have on their site a dual kit. You can see it right here. So this is $200 for a double kit. And, um, and then the single kit is 129 You might find them a little bit less expensive, different places. Occasionally, they're on sale. Uh, this is a kit that has um, the face cam in it. Sorry about that. But it's 127 just for the light, 129 it's right up there. And you can buy two for $200. They also have their different green screens. I also have their green screen uh, in my garage, um, their new wide version. So hopefully that answers your questions about um, prices. So um, did it hook up? Nope. Having an issue. Um, so I probably have to reset my network. I've had to do that before when I'm adding extra lights. I don't know. So we will get it on the network. I will demo the light next week. But that's as far as I can go tonight live. Um, we're charging um, the DuraCube. We are 
I'm going to get that light installed, and um, just for some reason, it's not joining my network, and it might be in my app for my Unify network, so Ubiquity, so we'll see what's going on there, um, but I'm not going to try to fix that tonight. And the reason for that is I have to be somewhere in a half hour, so let's just continue going through the chat here. Um I really am interested in the key light. Yeah, that's the air. So if you want the key light, it's the bigger light. And um, we can get this software to quit playing things. Let's see if we can go back to, how about just the key light? So this is the key light, and I have two of those. Retails for $179, and it is a lot brighter. Instead of 14 lumens, uh, this one is, where is the brightness? I think it's 24. Um, just looking for it in their information here. 2,800 lumens brightness right there. So, and 100% um, dimmable. Doesn't have the flickering for video, so keep that in mind. Um, that's one of the things that they've done a really good job of, so you don't have that cheap LED light flicker um, because of the hertz it's at. Um, it's only 35 millimeters thin, and um, like I said, I have two of them. They're not very heavy, and they come with the same um, adapter, but it's different. It's this telescoping one with the, the mount. And then they also sell a flex kit that you can hook on the end right here, and then you can flex it around different things. That's what I have. Um, I have a flex kit right here. So this is the flex kit, and I use this on the back of my television set, my bracket. And so that's the flex kit right there. And you have all those different angles and you can buy a double kit. This is combining two, but they also sell the flex kit. Um, and um, I also have my sky cam hanging off of it. And this is a GoPro bracket. It actually clamps on right there. And this is my Insta360 um, link. And it can program five different locations. It's a 4K camera and broadcasts in 1080p. I have one right there. And then I have another one right there. So two sky cams. And um, so you can get the flex kit. So if you want something that will hook on the back of your desk, this is the bracket for you. Um, and then if you need it to come over your monitor or something like that, you can get the flex kit. Um, from Elgato. So 179, 129 for the air. Um, I think it's like $79 for the mini, key light mini. And um, I think it's 800 lumens, but 2,800 lumens is huge. And so that's a lot of brightness that you can get on a key light. So you'll have to decide what brightness you need if you get them. Um, and I will add a key light link to my description. And again, um, there's a disclaimer there because those are Amazon associate links. You pay the same price on Amazon if I can find a link, but I get a little bit of support back to the channel. And in fact, what's in the mail right now, literally is, was paid for half from Amazon coupons. So I paid half and Amazon paid half, and I will have to bring that on the air next Tuesday and we will, um, Fire that up, and we'll be using that in the live stream as well. So another tool added in my studio. And before I go off the air tonight, I'll disclose what that tool is. So let's go back to me and the logo, chat on the air. And um, I know, right? That's cool in its kit now. Tony Cam, haha. The Elgato, the Elgato lights are good at being lights, but literally unusable without apps and Wi-Fi. I ended up returning mine. I want switches with options to control through Wi-Fi. Yeah, 
So if you don't want to use, uh, I've been using mine for two and a half years. I love them. Um, my son um, Bryson has one. I bought him the second one. That's the one we unboxed tonight. I bought it back from him. Um, they do hook up to your wireless network. You do have to use either the phone app or the software on your Mac or PC or a Stream Deck. But you have the phone option, you have a Stream Deck option, and you have your Mac or PC option to control the lights. I can just control them all with one button. In fact, now I have my pedal programmed um, to change the lights. So I can hit this button. I can hit just change my lights to a different camera angle. I can hit the middle button, changes my lights again, and that changes my lights. So it's changing my lights, which ones are on, which ones are off, and then I can turn them off right here and back on right here. And I also have another angle version right here. And you can see my lights are flickering and changing. So this is for camera one when I'm using it, and this is for camera two when I'm using it. And I have not made a button yet for camera three because I don't have my new Elgato camera three light hooked up yet. So Joe's right, there's other light options. And again, I'm not saying that Elgato is the only way to go. Um, you guys have to decide how you're gonna spend your money. My point exactly, Keith can use the light without his network. Um, and again, you can just slip them on and off as well, um, but I do think you have to have the app fired up on your PC um, to, to set the color temperatures and all that. And um, so what Joe's saying is my other lights back there, they have knobs on the back so you can change them. So again, and it, these are really good for in your studio um, when you're using your Mac or your PC, but if you're gonna go on location, I wouldn't recommend them. But if you're doing a podcast in your studio, it'd be great to be able to sit down at your podcast table, have a stream deck on the podcast table, and then they can hit the lights right there on the table, turn the Rodecaster Pro on on the table, and start recording with the lights. And you could even automate your cameras if you have the right kind of camera. So you mentioned live streaming side effects. Yeah, so here we go. Um, so... What are some live streaming side effects when you do like I'm doing all the time? Turn chat off the air. It's a great question, Tony. So number one side effect is that when you're in your studio all day and you consult and you spend so much time in here, you crave any place but this room. Wow, these are all messed up. Live ga glass cleaning. These are my glasses that really help me see in the studio. I forgot to change to them tonight. Goes back on. So side effects are, again, craving being out of the studio because I'm in here all the time. I've been working on my wife's podcast that we shot over a week ago. Um, I have another one to do. I have consulting going on in the studio. I did a free consult yesterday morning for a client, um, for, actually for a friend from our channel, and um, not gonna be a client. Um, I did another free consult a week ago with a new client I was working with this morning. So the side effect, number one, is wanting to get out of the studio, because I'm in the studio from about 8.30 or so in the morning until I get done live streaming at night. And again, it's no different than being in the office. So that's side effect number one. Side effect number two, in the summer in my studio, heat exposure, because I don't have good air conditioner in here. Um, the other thing is you get you get weary if you're live streaming. So if you live stream every week, um, a lot of times when I'm going to bed on Monday and I haven't quite decided exactly what direction I'm gonna go, I like to make my final decisions the day of. Sometimes I have things coming in the mail like I do tonight, it's here. Um, but it's in my mailbox and that's out that window and I can't go out that way. So um, so exhaustion and um, sometimes overwhelmed because of all the things you have to do to go live. Another side effect of live streaming is your pocketbook. So 
as I start consulting and start showing more stuff, I'm investing more and more money. I have three cameras, a bunch of different lenses. Now I do video production, but you wanna make sure you keep your budget down. If you're just gonna live stream, you don't need three cameras. You might wanna have an Insta360 to show your desk for unboxings and then your main camera. But again, it affects the pocketbook. It affects drives because I record and I have to transfer that information. So there's work to do even after I'm live. Um, and there's the work on your channel and all that. So the side effects aren't just um, the time and energy, the heat exhaustion, um, maybe the trepidation occasionally when you go live, you also have to be able to interact with your audience. So the side effect I love the best is new relationships. And that's a positive side effect. So we're gonna couple, cover a couple positive side effects. Another positive side effects is you learn. I learn about the stuff I'm unboxing. It forces me to do my research and it keeps my brain, I'm 60, almost 63 years old. So it keeps my brain active, keeps me working in my studio. People ask me questions and you know, sometimes I even get a sky cam in my shot like tonight. So you're constantly learning and it's expanding your horizon and you're meeting new people. So I love the education it causes me to have and I love the side effect of the relationships and the new people I get to meet. And then I even get consulting clients. And again, if you want a free consult and you're trying to live stream or figure out a stream deck or figure out your, um, your Canon cameras or your ATEM Extreme, Extreme ISO, ATEM Mini, Mini Pro, Mini Pro ISO, um, reach out to me on the link in the description below and you can um, fill out the form on my website and request a free consult. The other thing that is a side effect is that now my wife doesn't even want to come in the studio. When she comes in here, she takes one look at this, this desk and she gets completely overwhelmed. I don't know if that's a positive side effect or a negative side effect because if I want my private man cave, I can tell you, unless Shannon has a message to deliver me or she's coming in here, she doesn't want to come in here and watch TV because she looks at this part of my office and she gets overwhelmed. In fact, she made comments about it almost weekly. So I do I do coerce her into here for her podcast, but so, and so again, another positive side effect is I got to uh, bring my puppets out again and I got to practice a little ventriloquism live in front of you guys. In fact, I have heard through the grapevine from Grandpa Jones that that um, Rudy the Rhododendron and Ratso are planning on making an appearance very soon this springtime right here in the studio and that will be exciting as well. So it has forced me outside of my box, outside of my comfort zone, but to me, most of that is all positive. And so Tony, I hope that answers your question about that. Let's turn chat back on the air. Um, yeah, Elgato is like Apple. Um, glad you like the glass cleaner. It does work if you're all in. Elgato light does. Love you too, Joe. Um, has anyone found Freddie? No, we have not found Freddie. Uh, I've reached out to him with the email every week, but Freddie is MIA. So I hope he didn't get super sick and um, something happened to him. I only have one way to reach out to him. Um, I did reach out to him in Messenger and Facebook. I realized I did have him in um, Facebook. He's commented a couple of times. So I did send him a message. I haven't heard back from him via email or message. So say a prayer for Freddie Ponce, who's been a regular on my channel. And I have not heard from him since I think December 23rd. So you do the math. Sounds like withdrawal, yeah. And again, a lot of live streamers, YouTubers are burning out, so keep that in mind. Um, I'm not gonna jump out the window and get the new item, um, but I will tell you guys what it is. Um, Tony can feel my pain. Um, who was the free consult was with? Um, I don't disclose who my clients are. Sorry, on my live stream, I do protect their anonymity, but I do have um, people popping into the channel who chat um, and have asked for a consult. Some people do join the chat, but unless they want to share who they are, 
Um, I don't bring that up on my live stream, but I do respect the question. Benadryl is kicking in because David was not feeling good earlier. He's not having hives anymore. What happened to David? I don't know. David's down here in the chat. Uh, David had an allergic reaction to pizza. Speaking of side effects, <laughs> yeah, David, that's a side effect. Searching for Freddy is becoming almost as popular as searching for Bigfoot. Yeah, I don't know that it's a good thing, though, because Freddy was, man, Freddy was my, I, I got to tell you, Freddy um, and Hank and a few of you guys are in that top 5% of loyal viewers. Freddy would send me links to new things that came out. Um, so Freddy was like, um, some of you now have connected to me at that level, but Freddie, for over a year and a half, he and I did a number of Zooms together, uh, just to chat together. He's been on my quarterly Zoom gathering, which we will do again here in about a month and a half. So um, I wish we could find Freddie. You Step Productions, privacy is power. Hello, Keith and chat. Enjoying this uh, last part of the stream. Yeah, so we unboxed um, a uh, uh, Duro... Um, what is it called? Um, a Duro Cube by Go Power, 500 watt um, portable battery supply. Even has uh, ability to jump your car. Don't jump over your car with it, but it has jumper cables that come with it. Um, and we unboxed the uh, Elgato Key Light Air. I bought back from my son. I bought him a birthday present a couple years ago. Thought he wanted two lights, but he never used it. So I talked to him. Um, at a big birthday gathering and said, you want to sell it back to me? So I got a deal. So um, I, I paid him more than I would if I'd bought it used, but um, you know, you want to support your kids. So you guys can buy one for 129. I bought this one for less than 129. Um, so, okay. I think I've hit all the chats. Um, and um, I'm just looking, most of the things I missed tonight are chatter back and forth. Um, Tony's just having a little fun, reached out to Freddie about, yeah. So again, yeah, just to defend Tony, sorry if I made it sound like you're making fun of him. Tony and I chatted um, a few weeks ago and um, I asked Tony to reach out too. And um, so I appreciate that, Tony. And we really are generally concerned. So Freddie, if you're watching this or any of Freddie's family, you decide to watch this video or open up any of those emails, um, we are really genuinely concerned to make sure that Freddie Ponce from Venezuela, or Caracas, Venezuela, is okay. Um, so if you know him personally um, and you can get back to us, please let us know again. Um, Freddie is missing from Venezuela, Caracas, and we haven't seen him in a while. And yeah, it is a tough country. Well, I'm gonna wrap things up. What I got coming in the mail is, uh, let's do, I still have me in a slideshow. So this picture was taken at the Ripley's, believe it or not, in Newport, Oregon. And um, so when we are doing our little segments on the side effects, the live streaming, this is one of them. I needed a break, Shannon and I got out of town. It's been almost eight months ago. I think it was September last year. And uh, we went to um, re, uh, the Waxworks as well as Ringley Brothers or what is it whatever it is where people have uh, whatever. I can't remember what it is, but uh, they had this little minion display there. And that's me with my cap turned around going a little crazy because I was pretty, um, pretty uh, burnt and um, needed that break, and I had a lot of fun, and so that's why that was in our still image tonight. And, um, and then this picture has a meaning, right? Some nights I feel like I'm dealing with minions in the chat, and um, which is a compliment. My daughter loves the minions, and my wife loves the minions, and so it is a compliment. So, um, but that's kind of why I picked that picture today. Um, but the device that I have coming, um, man, I'm just getting exhausted right now. Let me move that out of the way. And let's drop a new still image in here. So it's for this 
Rodecaster Pro 2, and I have purchased just a Rode Wireless Go 2 transmitter. That's right, I did not buy the kit. I just bought a transmitter. It's out in the mailbox right now or on the front porch. Um, you can hook up two of those transmitters. They're 100 bucks a piece. So wireless go version two, you can also use, I think the wireless me or whatever it's called, but you can transmit directly from the transmitter. So I won't have to use my DJI mics and plug in my little adapter because I have to do this each week um, in my Rodecaster Pro 2. I'll be able to just take, and it's about this big, I'll be able to hook up one of my wireless lapel mics up to it. I'm gonna put this in my pocket and I will be able to wirelessly connect the wireless Go 2 directly to the Rodecaster Pro 2 because it has the ability to receive two channels of wireless Go 2 microphones or wireless Go Me, I think. And so you, I'm gonna buy another one if I like it. So I'll be able to have one on me and one on a guest or my wife and, I, and her assistant in their podcast because it's nice to just be able to have it on and get up and walk around. I won't be giving up this microphone, but I won't have to use these. These will be used when I'm remotely shooting from my iPhone. I, or if I need two more wirelesses, I will use this. So I'll be able to have four wireless mics now hooked up to my Rodecaster Pro 2. This is through a 3.5 HOSA adapter. On the other end, it's quarter inch, mono and mono. So right and left outputs. And then this end is a 3.5, and I can switch over to my DJI microphone. And that's my DJI microphone right now on my chest. And now back to the SM7B, and this is my pencil condenser you're hearing right now. It's right above here, just above the camera, two inches off the camera. But I like the SM7B the best. And there's a new version of this microphone. Um, and it has um, some extra gain. So you can use it with the old Rodecaster Pro. It's more expensive. Um, so if you're going to use this with a regular Rodecaster Pro, um, the first version, you need a cloud lifter, which gives you extra gain through phantom power. Or you can buy the new SM7. Um, B, whatever it is called, and it has a um, uh, gain boost in the back. So there's some settings right here, and now it added a gain boost back here. So that's really cool. So if you don't need the gain boost, you don't use it, but if you do, you can. So if you're using this as a vocal mic and a recording studio, it does do really good. The Thriller album was recorded by Michael Jackson on an SM7B to give you an idea. So that's what we'll be unboxing and setting up next week. And I'll also have the powered up Dural Cube ready to show you the LCD screen. Um, and um, I will have some footage of the solar panel. I'm charging it outside um, to bring to you next week live in the live stream from my HyperDeck. So it should be a lot of fun. So I hope you guys will join me for that. And I am Keith. This is Live Journey Production Studios. And to all my favorite minions out there, those of you listening to this recorded later or those of you listening to me live, thank you so much for joining me again. Please give us a like, thumbs up, hit the bell notification. Um, and remember, if you use the associate links that I add to the descriptions in my videos, it does help support the channel. You don't pay anymore, but you're helping me continue to bring new equipment and new items because this is the first time anybody has um, given me anything brand new um, like that. So again, thank you to Go Power. Um, again, it's not a sponsored video. They didn't pay me or adversely say I had to say anything. I don't even have to do a video, but I did want to unbox that and share it with you tonight as well as the Key Light Air. And we'll have that fired up next week. And I'll show you the stream deck. I'll show you the buttons and I'll show you how I can do three different sets from my Elgato foot pedal. So I'll be able to do this camera angle, that camera angle, and that camera angle with the push of my foot. And so that's just one thing you can do with the ecosystem from Elgato. So if you are listening from Elgato, hey guys, support me. <laughs> so I'll see you guys later. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Keith. This is Life Journey.
Production Studios, then I'm out.